So how you guys like uh, the East Coast so far? The bangers out here aren't as fanatic. The bangers. No, they're fucking. They don't bang as. They don't get in fucking mobs and bang, you know, like a Frisco. Mm -hmm. They just kind of you know, bang them, but they don't really get into it. <laughs> Hello. So how have the gigs gone on so far that you guys have been doing? It Not gets bad. better every yeah. every gig. Yeah. You know we've you know like the lineup changed last two weeks ago and shit. Kind of fucked things up for a little while, but things are getting tied now. Going yeah. in the right direction. The gig at the show place didn't go too well. He'd only been playing you know with the band for five three, days. Yeah, well three four practices days. actually. Three, four. That was a show with Anthrax. Yeah, yeah last week. But so, uh, a couple of years, it should be tight. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so, uh, how do the uh, East Coast audiences differ from the West Coast? Don't bang as much? Yeah, they're not as fucking fanatic. Well, I mean, they're just not, not as crazy. Fucking out there in San Francisco, the first ten rows is just hair and sweat and bobbing it's head. Fucking, yeah, they're like and bobbing, craziness, man. Bobbing. It's well, almost like punk gigs. Almost. Like really fucking, they're all over each other and shit. Here's Standing around, yeah. but maybe that's because we've only played, you know, a few gigs and people still kind of checking us out. Out there, it's more like home turf, you know. Yeah. L.A. was the fucking worst. Oh yeah, let's no not even get into all, L.A. All <laughs> well, we could never really like play a good gig in L.A. because we there just weren't that kind of people. Okay, so uh, what basically uh, provoked the split with Dave? It'd been in the can for a long time. Yeah. I mean, it was something. There was something that we were kind of we weren't in a hurry to get it happening. It was just we were just gonna wait around and maybe someday we would find somebody that would fit the spot. You know, it wasn't like we were gonna go looking for guitars. You know, yeah. and audition one and you know take up a whole bunch of you know time like that and just. You know, trying to audition people, so we would just, we would just hang on, and when we found somebody that we thought would fit in, you know. So we wouldn't have any idle time, you know. Yeah. Trying people out. That's but the then, start. kind of on the way, you know, on the big continental trek <laughs> between San Francisco and yeah. and New York, things kind of, you know, they spilled over. It was kind of a couple of things happened, and it became too much. The guy couldn't control himself under various situations where he had to yeah. and it just didn't you know on a long-term basis you know in a couple of years or something it could you know really become real man. real yeah. problems so we decided I think it was uh, <laughs> between Iowa and Chicago or something <laughs> that um, yeah, so that we that would oh, man, it's yeah that, shit that, happened. that pushed it over the top that was, so we decided driving, you know, just totally drunk Totally drunk, driving the U-Haul, and you know he could have smashed, and we could have got killed, you know. Yeah. He got in a fight with Mark Whitaker. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So we decided then that whenever there was a good opportunity to, to get rid of him, you know, that we would do it because we had a whole schedule lined up of gigs and the album and stuff, right? But then we came out here and said that to Johnny. At that time, we already had the guy Kirk Hammett from Exodus in mind. Yeah, he had a tape and everything. He was studying. Yeah. But uh, we didn't know when we would be able to fit him in the schedule. And then we came out here and sat down and told Johnny that this was what, what was going on. And then he said that it would be best to make that lineup change as, as early as possible, yeah. you know, so the album would be real yeah. tight and shit. So uh, the last gig we did with Dave was at the Ross uh, two weeks ago tonight. And then uh, we fucked around on Sunday. Monday morning we woke him up, told him, <laughs> and he was on... I mean, he was on a bus out of here an hour later. Yeah, that was real funny. And then we'll Kurt, up, yeah. Kurt flew in the same night from San Francisco. Okay. So uh, Exodus is from the Bay Area as well? Yeah, they're good friends, so I was yeah. from San Francisco. So you knew him for... Oh yeah, we, we yeah, played, I think, played three, three, gig, gigs, yeah. three gigs with yeah. him over the last six months, and we hang out with him, and they're good. They're like the only other, I mean, kind of as intense metal as we are. Yeah. They're not as tight and, and, and experienced and shit yeah. like that. 
but they're you know in the right direction. Have you heard any of their material? No. Good songs. But, uh, I haven't heard any of their but demos. Kirk was the whole band, so now I guess they're trying to. So how old is Kirk? He's twenty. And uh, you know, was Exodus his first band that did anything? Yeah. His first band, yeah. He told me you know he was in a lot of garage bands, you yeah. know, just like party bands. He's going through that. So uh, now that Dave's left, is this going to delay the release of the album or the recording of the album? No, or? not at all. We're going in the studio in Rochester in the same studio as the Rots and Man Award with their album. <laughs> we're going in there May 10th. and Morning uh, in a big ballroom like. Yeah, so we get the good live, live sound. sound. Real good live sound. And uh, studio sounds. we've got two and a half weeks to do that because we, I mean, we know all the songs and it's not like we have to go in the studio and write or anything. Yeah. So we can knock it down real fast. So basically, the songs that are going to be on the album is a lot of it's your what, demo yeah. tracks. It's, I mean, it's every demo song you've heard. Yeah. We're just going to rearrange some of the songs, yeah. add some parts. We're just going to, you know, the songs, the first nine songs, you know, the first album and the next nine songs will be the second album because every song we have, we feel is good enough to be put on an album. It's not like we have any filler tracks or anything. Yeah. So every song that we do, we want to have on vinyl. So. The first album is going to be the seven songs from the No Life to Leather, plus No Remorse and Whiplash. But there's a lot of, uh, for people that have only heard, you know, the No Life to Leather and hasn't seen us like at, at live and shit, there's a lot of changes and fucking, um, you know, add on parts and rearranging and shit like that. So the yeah, songs will be kind of fresh and you know? Yeah, more, more intense. More. So who's going to be producing the album? A guy named Chris Babish. He did the Rods and the Man of War albums up there too. And, We've heard, you know, their albums and shit like that, and he's got a good, a good enough sound, and a good enough uh, financial situation happening where it's gonna work out pretty good. We were t uh, talking with Christa Sangaritas, but he wanted up in the neighborhood of forty grand, which is a lot for a band of, you know, our <laughs> stature right now. You know, hopefully we'll. I mean, he's our choice producer, and hopefully we'll be able to work with them, you know, on second or third yeah. album, you know, but I guess like most bands like Anvil and shit like that, we just have to be patient with our first album, just make the best of it. So what's the title of the album? Metal Up Your Ass. That's kind of, as you probably know, it's by now the line that goes with this band more or less for right now. So when will you guys be going back to the uh, West Coast? To play or, or what? Well, are you gonna going to be living back out there? here permanently? Or are you no, we're still... When are I you mean, moving back? Move, no, we're still totally based in San Francisco. We're a San Francisco-based band, and what we're doing out here is just, you know, road work, whatever you want to call it, call it, you know. We'll be going back to the Bay Area as soon as we've recorded the album, just to, you know, relax and shit for a couple of weeks, and then we should be coming back out here to start a East Coast tour in July and August, something like that. But uh, we won't be playing live back in San Francisco for a long time, you know, probably until you know, late this fall or something. But we're still totally based in San Francisco and that's so our home base. And So you just assume scratch LA from your record? Oh, LA well. is <laughs> not associated with Metallica at all anymore whatsoever. <laughs> no ties, no nothing. So is there any uh, tour plans in the can as far as like promoting the album besides like, you know, the shows you're gonna be doing out on the East Coast? Well, that's, John set yeah. up anything, you know, I mean like... Well, we were invited to do the uh, some Art stuff, Talk yeah, the Art Shock Festival in Holland with, you know, Venom and Fate and shit, but um, it might be better to, uh, or, you know, it's, it, it will be better to go to Europe after the album's been out for a bit, you know, oh, so yeah. we can cause... So they really want to see yeah. bad, you know? Because, you know, if we go there, like, the same week, the album the album might not even be out that's by the middle of June, well. you know, that's not too happening. Because yeah. there's only so many people that are into fucking tapes and shit, you know? They'll you, get it, you know? the album like that yeah but, but there'll you know, be a lot more people that will you know? that will reach you know through vinyl that we can't get through tapes you know It'll take a while to get it around so hopefully we'll be going to Europe but this fall right now there's you know a real good relationship with Venom in terms of management and between the bands and stuff we're really we're working things out really good between us so we might maybe do some stuff in England with Venom if they can you know get off their ass and do more than one gig every five years <laughs> so is there any way that uh, John's will be able to release your album in Europe or is it just going to be in Oh, we're going to, 
No, it's gonna we're gonna right now we're looking for the best deal that we can get for domestic vinyl in Europe. We got neat records that are very interested. As you know, Johnny's doing some stuff with uh, the neat bands in America, <clears throat> and he's gotten the guy from Neat Records very interested in releasing the Metal Up Your Ass album on Neat Records in England. The only problem is the money situation we don't really know too much about yet, so there's also a couple other labels that are interested. Food for Thought, which did the fucking uh, Talos album, mm -hmm. which are, you know, is doing pretty good in England right now. They're interested too, and so we'll see what happens. But it's definitely gonna be domestic. And also, um, some shit in Japan happening with uh, Colombia and Japan, which is really good. Johnny's setting up. So I take it, uh, Cliff's working out pretty well? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Best so, bass player I've ever worked with. He's really, really talented. Yeah, he, you should, he I mean, Bach a lot. He does yeah, a lot of Bach. He's classical. Really, he's a lot of CC top, you know. He's really yeah. musical fucking yeah, He's not really genius. limited. He's just fucking... Yeah. He's great. He's a great guy, too. He's so laid back. Yeah. He's real easy to get along with. So you guys think you're even faster now with Cliff? Or uh, I wouldn't well. say faster. I'd say a lot heavier. Fuck yeah, he's got... There's a whole ball. different oh, bottom yeah. end to, sound to is, the whole sound. It's real good. It blows Ron's sound up. Hey, Ron was just... He was shit. You know, I taught yeah, him was... how to play. I taught him how to play bass. We needed a bass player for my old band, so I taught him how to play. He's just a friend of yours, more or less. Yeah. Yeah, so were you guys um, surprised to see that full color, uh, full color page shot and Kerrang? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Kind of because, I mean, if we had sent him something, you know, it was kind of weird because we, you know, that picture was taken fucking uh, about Long eight, time. ten months ago. Yeah. You know, when we, the first ever San Francisco gig we did, and you know. Xavier it was, just was really at one really show weird. at the Waldorf. I talked to him for a while, you know, and he wanted to, you know, get us in there, and, you know, I don't yeah. think that was because of him, though. I don't, I don't know. No, no. But, um, see, then after we got the fucking, uh, the shot in Kerrang! and stuff, we sent him some promo shit and announced, you know, for the mayhem section that we're coming out to America and all, you know, to the East Coast and all that shit, you know. <laughs> So hopefully, yeah, hopefully there'll be something yeah. happening there in like maybe the next issue or something. Yeah, that wasn't much of a write-up really though. It's kind of just more uh, like Oh, that was more a compilation of all, LA. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was good too that I mentioned that now we've moved to San Francisco. Yeah. So we don't get associated with fucking LA. LA. Too much more. I don't know what the metal is. They really don't <laughs> use that <I> name. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know, they, they dress up in the studs and whatever, just as a, you know, more or less a fad. Yeah. You know, and they're not really just into to, it like the, Just uh, to fit in with everybody, you yeah, know. Yeah. It's, just, it's kind of like a walking freak show. You, you know, they'll see you can put the most shit on just so everybody will look at them, you know. Fuck. It's not, yeah. it's not at all. I think metals, you know, got to have hair three feet high and spikes all over your body. Right, right. <laughs> like the Wild Dogs uh, album cover. Yeah. You know, I mean... It's real funny. <laughs> Wild dogs. So what do you guys think of Kerrang in general? It's going it's real down worse. <laughs> real down it was real good. First issue first, was oh, almost yeah. good. <laughs> and the second issue with Richie on the cover was of course God, but I mean <laughs> you no know, since that fucking uh, strike happened or whatever, something happened around um I think issue five or something. Like they started fucking taking articles from record mirror and shit like that since then it's just gone totally yeah, steadily yeah. downhill yeah. and you know it's just, it used to be real metal now it's got all kinds of crap in it. yeah it's so fucking it's just so widespread it's so it's just fucking you know for kids to jump on it's and, still okay you know, the last issue wasn't too bad yeah last issue wasn't too bad i don't even read sounds anymore i used to i fucking bought every fucking issue of sounds for three years and now it's just Sounds is getting so shitty too. You know, it's a whole new format and it's really weird. Really, anything that Sounds gonna have, Kerrang's gonna have just about anyway. Yeah, yeah. The only problem is that Sounds, uh, Kerrang, is uh, three issues. This is what I heard. Three issues ahead of themselves. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, if something happened like today, it will be in three issues and three issues down the line of Kerrang, which would be six yeah. weeks, and Sounds would have it next week. 
with like the underground uh you know the metal underground following around the world and shit i mean because a lot of people know well, about you guys been no i mean out. that's that's yeah. why it's i mean that's why we're so happening all over the place it's because of that whole underground yeah that's all in though yeah holland's crazy yeah real metal over there with art shock and they yeah. you know yeah. like you guys got voted something uh yeah number second second, second best, band. 31 overall yeah, it's and, really wild. But that though. whole yeah. underground scene is, I mean, this is so reason why we're doing so good. Oh, yeah. Because, you know. It's pretty I mean, if that whole scene wasn't, well. I mean, if you think about five years ago, there wasn't any scene like that. The only bands you've heard of were bands that have, you know, five albums out, you know. I mean, it's amazing that we could do so good on just a fucking tape. It's really funny in that uh, kick-ass month, you've seen the new issue? Yeah. Had a line that was really funny. We were the biggest band in the world without any vinyl. <laughs> Oh yeah. Funny line. It's a good bag. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's real meaty. Have you seen it? Yeah. It doesn't have a lot of, of like photos and bullshit, but it's got a lot more meat. Just basic down to fucking Green, earth you know, interviews Green. and shit. Yeah. You know. Instead of you know. Hard fucking big interviews. Yeah. You know I mean? Not just the basic. Yeah, you know. When did you form the band? <laughs> yeah. That's but, about the only uh, fanzine out here on the East Coast, really. You know that I've seen anyway. Yeah. Many. Whereas, like, out in California, lot. you got a, a dozen, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Which you can get a little overkill after a while if, yeah. if everybody's putting the same stuff, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Plus, a lot of time with fancy and shit, they tend to have, like, news and stuff that's, you know, only been out for three yeah. three years, you know. Yeah, Verrazano Bridge, man. 13. Yeah. Your lucky number, huh? Yeah, like, they'll pull, pull shit out of other magazines. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to, you know, add that, you know, that I haven't covered? <laughs> uh, <laughs> got any more beer? No. <laughs> <laughs> If I had a few more beers, I might take it. So. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So how did, how did it go? Like you know, as far as the working relationship with Venom last night's show. They Good. I mean, they, I mean, I've, as far as I mean, we never played with a band that was uh, bigger than us. That I mean, they were so fucking friendly. We've, oh yeah. Really, real this cool. whole week we've had a real close working relationship. And, like hung they, out a bit they, together, you they, know. They help you out, you know. Like Vandenberg, they'd be totally against you, you know. Yeah. You, oh, can I move this? No, no, it's got to be there, you know. You can't do this, you can't do that. Fuck, you know, Venom. Oh, we well, get even this with thing. Saxon, we get you know. This thing out of the way. When okay, we played no with problem. Saxon, yeah. they fucking had about two feet or something in front of the yeah, drums. Yeah, it was terrible. What is this? Yeah, they, they didn't even something. say hello. They didn't do nothing. Yeah. Well, Saxon I mean, wasn't friendly at all. Let's see now. Fifty-five. Let me see a beer, James. Pull up. See you one, or you want to drink one? He'll take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fucking like, uh, I think that the lineup that we have happening now, you know, like when me and James first got this band together, it was it was always like fucking Ron and Dave. It just wasn't happening. Like, yeah, you know, when, when you when you thought were... ahead five years, you couldn't picture any of them still in the band, you know, and now none of them are in the band. Ron just. Ron yeah, Ron was totally got in outside. because yeah. we needed a bass player, and the bass player, you know, we auditioned about three bass players, and none of them were working out at all. And I lived with Ron there, <laughs> so you know what the fuck? He's a bass player. Let's do it, you know. Yeah. He, you know, he was always player. kind of the outsider, but oh yeah, you even, can see in a lot yeah. of pictures he just—it's like know, three the, guys and then one, you yeah. know. Yeah, he, he'd sit there and look <laughs> at you, going, "What are you doing?" You know. <laughs> Why are you the making outcast. a face? Yeah. He was the outcast for but the whole time. even with days, you know, just like I think deep inside, we always thought that it wouldn't last fucking yeah. 
But right now, I think we're fairly confident in, that this lineup is going to, you know, stay tight for, you know, a bit of time. We've, I don't know how many people know this, but we've actually, you know, been looking for a singer fucking for about a year or something now. That's what I heard. And we still haven't been able to find anybody that we thought would fit what we're doing and, you know, shit like that. We have one guy that we've been trying to scam on for a long time, but he won't do it yet. You know, we tried getting Cliff for four months, too, before we yeah, got him, so we're still keeping our hopes up. But have you ever heard of a band called Armored Saint? Mm-hmm. Got the demo. Yeah, we're trying to... Oh, yeah. The singer from Armored Saint is the He's singer we want in this voice. band. Well, you should, I mean, his voice doesn't even, I mean, his stage presence, he'd, oh, he'd freak out, man. Yeah, the real banging. Especially fucking him, because he looks like he almost means it. Yeah, which like is real a lot good. of bands, it's force banging, you know, it's all set up, you know. That's yeah, not a feeling from the balls. Part, and, you know, stuff like the rods, you know, that's really fun. But fucking this guy, you know, is, he really fucking means it. And he's got a real good voice, and he's real young. You like don't. If, if like in a couple of years, man, he's gonna be sounding real major. Oh yeah. And, he doesn't uh, want to leave Armored Saint though. Well, or what's not this? yet. Suppose we have something with shrapnel. Uh, shrapnel. Well, actually, uh, we got something from him in the mail a while back, and they said they're gonna release an EP on uh, Metal Blade or yeah, whatever I that. I doubt uh, if that's gonna happen. Uh, that wimp from. I heard they're in the studio now doing another. Yeah. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> you know, it, you get that on tape. <laughs> it, their demo really wasn't as heavy as I expected after hearing less than oh, no, no. you know. But I no, mean, he does have. I really voice. like fucking a lot Maiden of that shit's really made and yeah. recycled. <laughs> a lot of, of maiden. Yeah. Well, priest, especially a lot of priest influence know, type clothes. But fucking. Like, if you, uh, like, I've been following Diamond Head for, like, a while, right, as you probably have heard of, mm -hmm. and, uh, like, if you compare, like, the way Sean Harris used to sound, like, three years ago, I got some early tapes, right, and the way he sounds now, you know, this guy, like, in three years or something could be fucking real, real big time happening. Hopefully it will happen. So what, what's your major influences, man, would you say? What, personally, or for the band, or what? Yeah, for the band sound. For the band sound, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Motorhead. I don't know. We try and be as you know, as and different as possible. Yeah, because you don't want to really sound like somebody. You mm -hmm. have influences. You don't really want to sound. You may want what to I sound, contribute, but you don't you know, want to sound like. What I contribute most to the songwriting is like arranging and shit like that. And yeah. My major influence from that is Diamond Head because. I stayed with him, you know, for like six, seven weeks, two summers ago, and really got an insight into how they did their shit and how they worked and, oh, yeah. and what kind of shit they did to try and be different and original and stuff like that. It really gave me real good, you know, learning shit back then. Now, a lot of people say they went out a bit and stuff. Yeah, well, I guess you the know. only reason I still like him is because I know him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you compare, you know, call me to help us or something. Yeah, right. Nice little headband. <laughs> <laughs> now let's see, we're going ahead of the Brooklyn, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 278. So, um, how about, like, you know, personally, you know, what's... Personally? What's... Well, your biggest my influence, like, well, from a drummer's point mm -hmm. of view, yeah. I'd say Phil and fucking, um... I don't really know if he's an influence in, in what how I play, but one my like my big idol is Ian Pace, X Purple, White Snake, and but I think influences is fucking um, is um, Phil and uh, the guy from Diamond Head. I mean he's not really brilliant or anything, but he does a lot of shit that that I kind of picked up on. You know, like offbeat cymbal hits and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, right. I noticed like you were. Uh you're a lot more into just just speed and like yeah. you know working his cymbals out rather yeah. than just uh, you know yeah. fills and double bass yeah. type of shit. Well, like the that. only reason I'm not into the double bass is because it just acquired it a few <laughs> what's that? A few days ago. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Still working on that. Huh? Yeah. I mean, you don't want to go out and start playing double bass until you're totally confident 
Oh, if you yeah, can't, you know, do it and shit like that. I just got that whole kit, you know, recovered and the double bass added to it when we moved to San Francisco late February. And there hasn't really been that much time to sit down by myself and just, you know, pound my both of my feet, you know, on those pedals for six hours a day because we've been so busy. You know, when we moved up to San Francisco, we had to work Cliff in the band, you know, and then now we have to work Kirk in the band, you know. It's not really, had, there hasn't been any time to, you know, get new shit down or anything, you know, in terms of new songs and stuff, you know. It's, okay. Yeah, Kirk, I definitely wouldn't say you lost any speed with getting Kirk. Oh, no. He, he's got Dave's speed, but he just, you know, Dave was all speed. He had no feeling, he had no pull-offs, he had no, you know, brilliant things, you know. He, Try and get brilliant, you know, some but it got too complicated. things, and then it just sounded really awful. You know. but he's real fast. He's real talented, though. You know, I don't, I, don't, I doubt he's gonna keep playing. You know. So you think really though, uh, he say the like, problem was more personal than musical. Yeah, well, there's a bit uh, of musical in just there too. Just a bit. I mean, just, just no, I mean he was, it was more like he was playing. For, the for girls, chicks, for yeah. to tell all his friends that he was in a band. It yeah. wasn't, it wasn't like this guy Kurt. I'll tell you, man. He fucking, he just, he wakes up in the morning, he just starts playing he guitar. Plays. I mean, he, he just plays all the time. The guy plays. You know, Kurt. I mean, Dave would only play, you know, when he had to. He'd never sit down and just jam. Or it wasn't like he played guitar because he wanted and felt like playing guitar. It was more like an excuse to fucking show off or something, you know. Yeah. So now you got the attitude. double V attack, huh? Well, well is, what, does, <laughs> not for long. Yeah. I was, I was like V. I would play. I thought, you know, yeah, but two V's is. No, I don't like it. I don't like two he, V's. Either. Kirk used to have another guitar. It was some star thing with the arm, and it sounded kind of crappy. So he sold it to get another Marshall cabinet. So that's why he's using that V right now. I think he's gonna get an Explorer. I think that'd be yeah. real good. Yeah. yeah. Two V's, you know, it's real cliche. Yeah, because it's kind of like the V is like getting to be the cliche heavy metal, metal act. Guitar, yeah. Right. I, I love it, you know. Plays great. So, uh, James, have you ever done much lead work then, or you just basically want to stick to to rhythm? Yeah, basically stick to rhythm. I don't know why. I like just fucking being the you know, back line, you know. I always liked, you know, so like Scorpions, like Rudy Shanker. For sure. He's rhythm god, I think, you know. That's for sure. So, you guys have basically give up on, on looking for a singer then? Or you I, mean... No, no, no. We're just... Well, right now, I mean, our, most of our attention... Well, I can't say most of our attention, because last time we talked to him, we got a definite no. But the first five times... <laughs> the first five times we talked to Cliff, we got a definite no, too, you know? Yeah. So we're still... It makes you mad. We're still hoping that we will end up getting him. But you know we're still keeping our doors open for a singer. Yeah. But, but it's not like this album. Yeah. Out here. I mean it's, it's not like uh, we're gonna delay the album or anything yeah. like that until we find a singer. There's about three people out here that Johnny's hooked up yeah. with that want to try out, you know, but we haven't got around to it. Because you know we've been busy with Kirk, you know, and getting rid of Dave and all that scene, you know. It was, you know, that took up a lot of time, so we haven't had any time to audition any singer. Sooner or later, we'll end up with them happening. So Kirk must have learned the, the material damn fast, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I would notice, like, well, last night, maybe, real quick. like, maybe a couple times last night, there was a couple rough endings at the end of songs, but, oh, I mean, yeah, as far yeah. as the actual, you know, structures, I mean, for, structures, fucking, for know, I mean, we practiced maybe eight or nine days with him, I mean. Actually with us, you know, he played with yeah. a demo, you know, and that's love shit, you know, playing off the tape, you know, I bet you, you know, Ten other guitarists, they'd all get the, you know, different. they'd all get different things. They hear yeah. it different, you know. It's just how you hear it. You know, you'll hear certain things on the tape instead of, you know, actually how it is. And then when he came in, I had to show him, you know, like it must have been, you know, a couple of things on each song, you know, just the picking and just, you know, small things that make it really tight, you know, which you gotta have. You know? Yeah, but for fucking, you know, nine days, it's fucking, it's real tight. I mean, for nine days, it's oh, yeah. tight and. You know, f after nine months, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fucking... He's got a lot of good material, yeah. too, that we're going to start using. And we're going to be doing more, like, 
you know, harmony, you know, I'm not going to be doing it at least, but, you know, just the harmony, guitar things, real brilliant, you know. Just stuff you get into, the more musical experience you get, the more writing. You tend to, like, when you first start writing and shit, it's just one, two, three, bang your head, you know. But after a while, you kind of want to move on, and, you know, right now, most of, most of the songs we have in the fucking pipeline are, like, at more moderate speeds, you know, we don't really have any super metal militia speeds songs yeah, lined up. You know? you know? Just fast songs after a while tend to sound the same. You know, if you have, you know, 25 fast songs, you know. Yeah, with double bass, all of them, you know. Yeah. Fucking like acid. Fucking <laughs> oh, yeah. acid. Full speed ahead. <laughs> yes. This week. <laughs> Just, you know, fucking um, time changes and, you know, breaks here and there and stuff. Because, you know, if you play a fast song, like, I mean, I don't want to, like, say anything bad about Jack or something. But, like, they do a fast song. And it's just boom, 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 boom for five minutes, right? But, like, when we do fast stuff, we try and have, you know, breaks and stuff. Because it, it, you know, it spaces it out more, you know. It's, it there's more the room. the more faster. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a really fast slow. song with a half a minute slow part in it, then the fast part would seem a lot faster. Yeah, you know? it kind of kicks your face again, like the beginning, you know? And the another next another question. Another toll? <laughs> there. <laughs> so, uh, how, how's things working out with John so far? As far as the relationship, bad. working Not relationship, bad, I mean, naturally, yeah. ten people living in a house or something, that's going to be a little bit, uh... Out of the woods. Fuck, that practice place was the fucking worst. <laughs> Jamaica, Queens, fucking... It's all mm -hmm. black, all black area. It was terrible, you know, you have to go in groups to the liquor store, you know, or you get, you know, you mugged. or, you know, mugged or what. <laughs> and, uh, the place was just a fucking armpit of a fucking place. Wait. No shower, we get... You know, most areas, like, part until the Rockies or something. Just, you know, like, from Texas and shit east. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing Texas. Well, really, probably your best areas, you know, like, in the Midwest area would be, like, Chicago and Detroit. Uh -huh. And, yeah, like, Detroit, Ohio. I heard that you know, fucking Michigan's things. real metal. And fucking San I'd, Antonio. I'd say Chicago really? is, is much better than Michigan, easily. Really? Well, you know, I've only been to Detroit once. Uh -huh. But from what I've seen, Chicago is a lot... It's it's very similar to New York as far as the you know the bangers. Uh -huh. They may not be <laughs> as intense as far as you know headbanging, but they're really into the gear and the patches and all that type of shit, you know. Uh -huh. But really, that's about it in the Midwest, you know. And I mean, you're gonna have Texas, right? I heard the yeah. Well, that's what I've heard. But I mean, um, you never been down there. Never been down there. Like and really, Antonio Texas is so fucking big to yeah. where shit, you know. I mean. I don't know. Guys, He's that fucking know, massive bridge. Look like it. Uh, <laughs> where the fuck they are? They don't have directions. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. This is gonna take it. So is this you guys' first time on the East Coast or well, playing? Mine, yeah. I mean, you know, Lars period. Been here. Okay. I've been visiting out here. Quite a bit before, but this so you're, first time out here playing. You were born in Holland? No, Denmark. Denmark. Oh, really? Same thing. <laughs> so what? Denmark's right next to Holland? Uh, Not really. A couple of countries up. Uh, <laughs> a couple countries up the block. Yeah. <laughs> so then yeah, your I'm parents? What one, man? And, well, then we moved to. My parents wanted to move to LA in '80, and I didn't really feel that I was ready to like live by myself then. So I was only 16. So. I just so, went with him. That was right when things were starting to happen in Europe, you know, with the new wave of metal and all that shit. Then I came out here and was real dead. <laughs> real fucking dead. So let me, just for the record, let me get down you guys' ages. You're... James is 19, I'm 19, Kirk is 20, and Cliff is the old man 21. now. 21. 21, yeah. Big 2-1. He's a good man to have around in California, though. The drinking yeah, age yeah. is 21. <laughs> But What's the nice drinking age where you're from? 21. Yeah. yeah it's 19. It's cool around here. The only good thing I, I think is the drinking age. 19. <laughs> yeah. They have weird shit like oh, the yeah. liquor stores aren't open on Sunday. That's and, weird. You're not allowed to drink alcohol.